Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in Church Dogmatics by Emil Brunner, first published in German in 1946. We're going to look at all of Chapter 7, it'll be 193 to 214, and uh, it's on a doctrine not usually covered in systematic theology. And uh, Brunner realizes this, uh, even in the introduction to the chapter, he said, this is not a normal doctrine in systematic theology. But he's got it inserted here as the doctrine of salvation history. So it'll be 193 to 214 on the doctrine of salvation history. Let's go to block one. Okay, we begin by taking a look at understanding theology as historical. Biblical theology is historical. It's historical revelation. There is a particular saving history. In German, it's called Hilgeschichte. Hilgeschichte is not history in German. It is a history with meaning. Hilgeschichte. It's a meaningful history. And in this case, it's a particular saving history. Revealing a universal historical horizon as the mystery of creation. A long process of divine transformation as the realized energy of spirit, as a saving history of humanity, a saving history of humanity, a transformative saving history of humanity that is also the history of the self-revelation of God. The self is understood as self before God. Scripture presents the self always in relation to God with language and with conscience, which uh, make up the image of God in us. We are always in relation to God with language and with conscience. So we look at the self with language and conscience. Man is historical being, a subject for community. And Brunner says, Everyone historically shapes, historically shapes their lives, and uh, as an overall movement of humanity, we are moving toward God's eschaton. We are moving toward the fulfillment of kingdom of God. And so Brunner says there is a theological character to our history, known in German as Hilgeschichte. Hilgeschichte. There is a theological character to our history. There is a realm of spirit, a realm of transcendence, a history of spirit. There is a finite history that we can examine, but there is also a theological history of spirit. And Brunner wants to affirm that uh, theology should be understood as historical. There is a historical unfolding of the realm of spirit as it moves from dunamis to energia and as it moves toward the goal of the eschaton in Christ. And what he calls this uh, realm of spirit, he calls it the economy of divine revelation in block two. The economy of divine revelation. Divine revelation adapts to the development of mankind because it reveals the gradual self-revelation of God. God becomes known as the God of history through exodus, through covenant, through judgment, and through mercy. For those who perceive the realm of spirit, we live in an economy of judgment and mercy. It reveals the, the realm of spirit reveals the living God of history, revealed in Israel in a provisional way, revealed in Christ in a perfect way, within the inclusive concept of promise and fulfillment, and that's where Moltmann enters in. Moltmann saw providence as the movement of promise and fulfillment, the dialectic 
of promise and fulfillment. That defines the overarching theme to all of Moltmann's theology. His neo-orthodox position was the dialectic of promise and fulfillment. Through God's historical mighty acts. So this uh, economy of divine revelation is an economy of promise and fulfillment. John 1.17 The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. And then uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 7 and 8 The ministration of condemnation was engraved in stone. The ministration of spirit will be more glorious. And then Romans 3.21 The righteousness of God apart from the law is manifested witnessed by the prophets. So what is being pointed out here by Bruner with these references there's a continuity of a promise and fulfillment between the Old and New Testament. They aren't in a disharmony. They are obviously different covenants, old and new covenant, but there's a unity in this difference. Let's go on to uh, block two, note four, the economy of the ministration of spirit. He goes to Galatians, the first uh, book of the New Testament. The law is our pedagogos, our tutor, to prepare the way for Christ. And then Galatians 4, 3, and 4. When we were children, we were in bondage, but when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his Son to redeem us. To redeem us. We see both difference and we see unity in this uh, continuity of revelation from the Old to the New Testament. Now let's go to uh, note 5, and we get to the uh, description of salvation history for Brunner. He calls it the dialectical economy of difference and unity. The Old Testament prepares the way for the New Covenant, but revelation of a personal God could only be revealed in the person of Christ. Christ brought the revelation of the Father, the personal Father in heaven. He said, call Elohim our Father in heaven. Christ brought personalism. So, revelation of personal God could only be revealed in Christ. The coming of Christ has been an event long prepared, an event long prepared, Israel is not merely a national entity, but at the same time the church, which is established and held together. Post-exilic Jewish worship revealed the following. God is in our midst. God desires service and worship. Sin requires sacrifice. So the post-exilic period played the role of a bridge between the Old and the New Testament. But the point is, there's a continuity here. There's a difference and unity between the Old and the New Covenant. There's difference, but there is unity of revelatory truth. God's intended purpose remains the same from the very foundation of the world. And that is to bring all creation toward the eschaton in Christ. Christ was foreordained, predestined to be Messiah, to be Messianic Savior before the foundation of the world even took place. And the eschatological goal of creation has been to bring creation into perfect communion with the triune Godhead when God will eventually become all in all. And therefore, we believe in a theology as historical. And we believe in a, 
and economy of that theological history as being one of difference and unity, revelatory difference and unity. And uh, I agree completely with that with Bruner. And so did Jürgen Moltmann. Jürgen Moltmann picked up, uh, he picked up on the neo-orthodox dialectic of promise and fulfillment. Moltmann's entire theology, beginning with his theology of hope, and then crucified God, and then church and the power of the spirit. His initial trilogy was all about um, a theological system based on promise and fulfillment, divine promise and fulfillment. And Moltmann began with that trilogy of a theology of hope, crucified God, and the church and the power of the spirit. That was his first triune offering in theological work. But it was all about uh, um, promise and fulfillment. Every theological consideration by Moltmann was considered within that dialectic of promise and fulfillment. Okay, very briefly, in three, uh, we get a closing hermeneutic on salvation history from Brunner. The witness, well, the witness to Christ comes from the vision of the suffering servant in 2nd Isaiah, some 600 years before Christ. Doctrinal unity must be maintained between the Old and New Testament. John 5.39 says, Search the scriptures, for in them is eternal life, and they testify of me, Christ. We negate allegory, but we affirm typology in the Old Testament, says Bruner. Typology does exist as a realistic um, hermeneutic, hermeneutic in the Old Testament, but uh, allegory can become uh, uh, uncontrolled and not really uh, stand up to good uh, biblical interpretation. So he said it's better to affirm typology, but to leave allegory as questionable. Because allegory has been abused in the past history of the church. And uh, reformers recognize that and were critical of uh, this uh, hermeneutic of allegory being uh, overused and misused. And Bruner, being a reformer, says we should negate that uh, use of allegory. But he says there is a very obvious use of typology in the Old Testament. Old Testament typologies foreshadow Christ. Exposition must remain historical and natural. That is uh, an axiom by the Reformers. And then uh, he says, 1 Corinthians 10 tells us these things, Old Testament, these things are, are examples written for our admonition. So the Old Testament is... Uh, offers typologies that uh, can be unified with the New Testament gospel. And so we do affirm the hermeneutic of uh, typology. But we have to be very careful about uh, the use of allegory, says Bruner. But fundamentally, what he wanted to do because systematic theology does not usually posit a doctrine of salvation history. No doctrine of history is usually posited in systematic theology. But Bruder wanted to do so because the German language is uh, very key on emphasizing that there is a, a higher, more meaningful realm of history. In German, it is Hilgeschichte. And Hilgeschichte for Brunner is the higher, more meaningful salvation history of the Holy Spirit, the incarnate Holy Spirit, incarnate within history as salvation history, as a penetrating, uplifting salvation history that is lifting secular history 
into the eventual goal of the doxa glory of God becoming all in all. The eschaton of Christ's kingdom. So very well done. A uh, chapter on Hilgeschichte or salvation history. And our next lesson will be chapter 8, uh, 214 to 231. Yeah, chapter 8, 214 to 231. Next time, it's going to be a chapter on the law. That's going to wrap up uh, this special inserted doctrine on salvation history by Emil Brunner.